Well, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this Inspire podcast. We've had so much fun at Integrity adding one iconic partner after another. And this partner that we're adding in this addition to the Inspire podcast is unlike any other. In fact, if you look at the people who have been successful in the insurance business, many of them can track their roots and trace their roots all the way back to this individual. And it's been an honor over the last couple of years to get to know my guest that is one of just the most iconic figures in the insurance industry. And his story is here to inspire you. And I want to let you know that I'm so excited to let you know that Hubert Humphrey and Hegemon Group International has now joined the Integrity family. And joining with me today is Mr. Hubert Humphrey, the CEO, uh, founder of HGI. Yay! Man, listen, yeah. Hubert, this is incredibly inspiring for me personally. Well, well me too. And me I want too. you to know, you know, for what we did here with Integrity and Inspire, what the whole idea of this podcast was to bring on our partners and to talk about, and especially Inspire, all of our various employees and our team members, just about the stories about how people came into the business about their life and people don't realize maybe the impact that you've had on the insurance industry, frankly. In fact, Hubert's a very humble person. So I'm going to I'm going to give you a little bit of, of the background. Hubert was one of the very first people that joined A.L. Williams and created what's now Prime America. He was one of the very first guys that joined that incredible company to help them grow to the incredible group that they are today. He then went on to form World Marketing Alliance, which is called now World Financial Group, which is one of the largest groups in, in the entire industry. You were the founder of that. You sold that to Aegon. And then you've, listen, most people don't do it once. You've now done it three times in founding Hegemon. And now with what you've been able to do, and if you think about even how I got started in the business, when I first started selling, the people who trained me had been trained by you eventually that I was using some of the principles you created, which is unbelievable. And so this is just a rare moment where I am just in awe that I get to sit here and now call you partner and introduce you to all of our partners and really about the excitement that we have. So thank you for joining us, well, man. We're well, excited. Well, the feeling is mutual, and I'm honored to be here in your presence. And what you've done is just meteoric, and you've taken a whole new model, a whole new way of building a giant empire through not acquisitions, but merging partnerships with established organizations. That's a tremendous recruiting model, trust me. And <laughs> well, you've done it at a high level, and so I admire what you do. I love the name of your podcast, Inspire. Mm -hmm. Too many people are out there trying to impress people as opposed to inspire them. If you inspire Amen. them, you got, you got somebody. You can move them. I and mean, I love that name. But I'm just, I'm just proud to be here and uh, just share any wisdom that I have, any experience, because I know experience is the key to greatness. And old Andrew Carnegie said the fastest way to become a millionaire is to find one and do exactly what he did, copy him. I'm a firm believer in copying, and, and I try to go out there and teach and share with people. So glad to do it. Well, it's amazing how many people have copied you and the success that you've had for years, I mean, for decades. And it, it's amazing. I, we just got to hang out with your wife, Norma. And I love the story. You have so many stories. It's going to be hard to keep them contained. Yeah, You're you going to have this. a lot of inspired broadcasts. We're gonna have, we could have a whole <laughs> series of podcasts about your stories. But one of my favorites, you know, I'm a family man. I love just my family more than anything. And I loved getting to know your family recently and getting to know Miss Norma and learning that story. Tell us about, this is so unique. You know, I've got a third grader. I've got a first grader and a third grader. And this is such a unique story. Tell us about how you guys met. Well, it's, uh, it's, it is a very rare thing. When uh, my family, we lived in Macon, Georgia, a little town, but it had about 90,000 people in central Georgia down there, probably best known for Little Richard and, and Otis Redding and things like that. But it was, it was a rock and roll headquarters kind of. But it was a little town, and I uh, lived in South Macon, and my family moved out there and put me in, uh, in, the, in Cynthia H. Ware School, a little grammar school, and the third grade, and they, they take me, the, the teachers take me in there, and they put me in the same class with Norma, and they put me in the desk right behind Norma. So, so I'm introduced to her in the third grade, never knowing that that's going to be my soul bait for eternity, and it's been just the most wonderful thing in the world, and Norma 
was a very mature soul, even as a little girl. And she was the kind of person people gravitated around just to have as a friend. Mm. You know, she wasn't the coolest one. She wasn't this, but she was a friend. She, she's mm. been that way. And very few people have a chance to say they marry their best friend. I married my best friend. She's the love of my life, but boy, she's my best friend too. And she has been a tremendous partner from that whole time. And it's just been magnificent. Here she is today. She's been hearing me talk so much for the last couple of years about this Brian Adams and about what we're going to do with this integrity. And, and she just literally finally, she said, she used one of my quotes against me the other day. She said, don't tell me about the labor pain. Show me the baby. So we're finally about to show her the baby. That's that's so good. But but it, it, as you've got, I got to meet her and know her. She's, she's a hugger. First thing she I did was, I love it. first thing she loves to do is I'm hug you. Yeah. She's a hugger. And um, you know, I think the person that hugs the most people are going to win. And she she's helped me do that. You know, I, I, I motivate them and she hugs them. <laughs> that, that's, awesome. that's the way it works. So that's how I met her. And uh, we just became sweethearts, little, little childhood sweets. I used to ride my little swing bicycle about four blocks over from my little duplex apartment over there to where she lived at 4285 Mikado Avenue. And, <laughs> and I'd sneak up there and, and bang on her window and she'd come out and see me. And that, that, that's that. we just grew up that, that way. And, uh, oh, and, uh, and I'm still banging on her window now. That is amazing. What a great, well, listen, I, I loved getting to know her and I, I love how excited she is about this partnership. Oh, she's I mean, very excited. she's excited. She, we go, when we go back, I, I remember way back even before the, before the A.O. Williams days, I'm working on the railroad. You mentioned the railroad, which is, you, you, you want to be so, to share a little bit about so that. So most people, most people don't realize, so you, you didn't get into the insurance business right away, right? Mm -hmm. You were, you know, no. they, they say you're working on the railroad all the live long days. You were actually doing that, right? Tell us about I, I, working. But most on people the railroads. can't realize Hubert Humphrey lived a whole separate life for 17 years on the railroad. Wow! I have a railroad pension every month. A railroad pension comes to me. Uh, no yeah, kidding. I have a railroad. And what pension. were you doing on the railroad? Uh, let me just let's start first. Please, yeah, start from the my best friend that I had grew up with, Larry Henson. He was a great friend of mine, we, the childhood friend, and he was the best man at my wedding. Oh, and uh, and I, I went to Georgia Tech when I got out of high school. I was a pretty good student. I was an honor student in the Beta Club there at the old Lanier High School in Macon, and I wanted to uh, I, I, I sort of have an engineering system kind of mentality and. So I went off to Georgia Tech, and I liked their football team. Back in those days, they were a powerhouse. Oh, yeah. And so I, I, uh, I went to Georgia Tech and uh, went a couple of years. After the first year, Norman and I get married in, that, in, my, in the second year, and then, and then she's pregnant with our first child. And you've met him, Jody, big old oh, yeah. six-foot-four guy. And he's the, the one that introduced he's, us. He's the one that started this thing. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's the guy that was a little uh, – she was pregnant with him. So I said, I was going back to school. He's you, he, he, you birth in December, and then after we, we get and then we'll bring you back up and we'll re, go back to our apartment up here. So while I was home looking for a summer job, just to work, do something for the summer, my best friend, Larry Henson, had just started on the railroad. And we were talking about everything, catching up on everything. He didn't go to college and he wanted to know how college was. And I said, it's okay. And I said, I got to make some money for the summer and got a baby on the way. I said, I, he said, why don't you go down and try to join the railroad? I just joined three months ago. I said, you did? He shows me his he get his, his 15th of the month pay, pay stub. It was about $1,390, almost $1,500 wow. in, in, in the early 60s. So it's a lot of money yeah. now. And he had made a lot of overtime and all that stuff. And I looked at that thing, and that was all the money in the world. I'd never seen anything like that. I mean, I never, <laughs> what? I said, what do you do? Well, what the, just think you asked me, yeah. what, what do you do on the railroad? I didn't know what a railroad man did. I, I knew what a train was. I didn't know yeah. what he did. He, and this, this is how he got me. One, he showed me this check. I, I didn't care what they did, to be honest with you. He showed me that check. <laughs> and then secondly, he, he, sec, the second thing is that he said, Hubert, it's pretty simple. He said, I, he said I'm out on these through freights, and all we do is when I just get up on the caboose, and the train goes, and when it stops, I get off the caboose. I said, I can do that. <laughs> I go down there, and lo and behold, they hire me. If what I thought was a summer job sounded exciting for two or three years, I was in this coma thinking it was great. Then I awakened from my coma when they realized I'm trapped. I had my second child on the way, third child, fourth child. I was a full-fledged, card-carrying adult now. Life yeah. just kicking my butt all yeah. over the place. Real and I'm world. And I'm trapped, and I can't go back. I didn't get to go back and get my degree and all that good stuff. And, and, and really, I was on a, this really happened to me. I was on a caboose, on a red, red caboose at the end of a train, riding this train. And then all of a sudden, on this train, I have this epiphany. Yeah. You know, uh, you don't have many epiphanies, but I had one. 
And it was, I woke up and I said, how did I get here? I really, this is honest to goodness. I said, how did I get here? <laughs> what am I doing with these boots and this lantern? Stop this train. Who, who put me on this train? It was kind of, that one of those kind of moments. Really? And I was just sitting there feeling, I said, what in the world is having me? Because I was having a lot of fun running around the other end of the road doing the wrong things. And I realized that, that I was going no place until I awakened. But I, then I realized I was trapped. There was nothing mm. I could do about it. So I, I spent the next 13 of those 17 years trying to get away from the railroad. Wow. Now, I worked on the railroad. We were in all kind of head-on collisions. We were in derailments. All kind of bad things really? happened. And it was a, uh, uh, you, you know, I had a yeah, full yeah. knee replacement here in, in January. Yeah. I was supposed to have got that 50 years ago because I hurt my knee two months after I started on the railroad. Got knocked off side of a train, split the cartilage. Oh, in the old-fashioned days, they opened it up and took the cartilage out. He said, this will last you 10 years. And one of these days, they'll have better doctors and you, you can get you some else. Well, I went 50 years overdue wow. getting this thing. I was going to do it earlier, but we couldn't get this deal I know, done. I, I got to work harder. Yeah, I, 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 so I had a lot of pain getting this thing done. But anyway, <laughs> so here I was now out of the railroad doing all this stuff and just riding the freight trains. Were and, you, were you, what were you doing? Were you driving the, what do they well, call it, an engineer? Well, they had something called the pool freight. They had a five crew pool freight that with three trains, one went to Macon, Macon to Albany, Macon to Columbus twice, and they had five crews. There were five man crews, and they had five conductors, and they were all 65, 70 year old older guys. And they, we were the first two young people that they made conductor. We had to take an exam then pass the test to be a conductor. So we were we were two young guys in this old man's pool. It rode these trains, man. It was cool. It was it was it, it, it was a good pie back job, and had the union to protect us. They couldn't fire you because of the union. And of course, by the last thirteen years, I was so frustrated trying to find some business, and I was always telling everybody, "I'm gonna leave the railroad. I'm gonna get. I'm not. I'm gonna be with somebody. I'm gonna do something." And I tried everything. Couldn't find that. Didn't have the money. Didn't have the experience. Couldn't find anything. Tried all kind of different, yeah. different things, and it was good for me because I learned a lot. And bottom line is that I just kept that trying motor going. Yeah. That's the one thing I tell everybody. But don't ever give up. Keep that trying motor going. And I did, and tried Amway. I mean, I tried a lot of things, but I yeah. I go back so far that Amway was only in eight states and really? only had about fifteen thousand people recruited. They've since had a couple hundred million recruits. Yeah. But I was there at the beginning. So I learned some lessons there that I brought with me. And when I find financial services, a little part-timer that I, uh, I went to church with his daddy, and so he comes <laughs> and tells me this little story about A.L. Williams. And that's what got me into financial services. Wow. It was after that, after those seven or eight years of Amway, and, and about 90 days later, I quit the railroad after 90 days. At the beginning of this little company, I, I, I equal my railroad income in three and a half months on, in, wow. in the beginning. And I was gone. Of course, it didn't take wow. much to equal my railroad income. This was January 1978 when I joined, went full-time in April of 78. So, And A.O. Williams was just getting started oh, it, at that there was, there was 30, Art had 30 people active out of his original 85 that he brought over with him, and they were only like a month or two into it. And uh, they, they were good crusaders. They fought whole life ages, replacing by term invested yeah. difference. But they didn't have any system. He had a launch pad, but he had no missile. I now had had seven or eight years of learning recruiting right. and building. And so I brought all that recruiting and building into and He brought the Crusade. And those twin engines is what lifted the A.O. Williams. One and a half million recruits later and 10 million policies sold and positioned it where great companies and great people and all have been built since then. In between you and R. Williams became essentially partners in that and took it to a whole different yeah. level. Yeah. And just a yeah. massive yeah. Art was the figurehead of the company, and he was, yeah. uh, to his credit, he spent about three or four or five years learning the, the by term of the difference business and had a little, yeah. just a little agency. And he was, he was a football coach. He ran, he ran the company right. like, a, like a high school football coach in the locker room at halftime. That's right. how he ran the company. He was Coach Williams, and it was just a great experience. And, but a funny little thing about Art, he probably wouldn't ever remember this today, but this is a defining moment. These defining moments occurred. I had just been in A.O. Williams for about a week. I, I, was, I was still on the railroad. I came in from a railroad trip. I heard that Art Williams was coming down from Atlanta to meet little guys in Macon. There was only 10 of us down there in Macon. And he's coming down to see us. I said, well, well I got to meet this guy because I, I like it. This, it looks good. And, yeah. and so I go, I come running in there with my jeans, my elf stolen. I had him cleaned up or anything and listened to Art. And he had me in that meeting. One, he said, we're going to have 300,000 people all over the country He's only two or three months old. Yeah, he had 30 and, people. And, and so, so, gonna, so, he so, already so, had that vision. So, so, yeah. so, I, so I bumped the guy next to him. I said, they're going to have 300,000 people. I said, how many people are in the company? He said, 30. I said, what? 
I knew I was in the right place then. Then he talking about ground floor. Oh, and, he, and, and, and he said, "We're going to. My goal is to help all of you make a lot of money, be successful." And he, so he had me. He had me at hello. But in my first four or five days, I did a little damage there. I kept telling all these people in this little little one one room office that they were in. I said, what night do y'all hold your opportunity meetings, your recruiting meetings? What night do you do this? I said, we do this in Amway. We do this in Amway. They, they didn't do it. They weren't doing any yeah. of that. But every other word I would say was Amway, Amway, Amway. And they kept rolling their eyes, and I didn't know what was wrong. Well, I found out when Art was there. Art was scared of Amway, didn't understand Amway, misconception. And I was, I'm in there just doing them, but Amway, Amway, Amway. <laughs> and so... These guys told him, they were pointing at me. And I looked over and I saw the guys pointing at me. And that's Art looking at me. I said, Art, Art sees me. That's great. <laughs> he comes down to the door as I'm walking out the door. And he introduces himself, shakes my hand, says, you were glad to have you on board with us and everything. And appreciate you being here and all. He said, but I uh, just want to tell you something. He took his finger, not, not mean or ugly, but just firm. And he pointed at me and said, now, remember now, this ain't no Amway boy. And that was the last thing. We never mentioned the word Amway ever the rest of our lives. And I just went out and no. built him an Amway of insurance and mutual funds. <laughs> and that's, and he, that is, he, he, he won't like that story, but that that's what incredible. happened. Well, what you guys built, and if you think about just the impact that you guys have had on society, I mean, it effectively invented term insurance, it invented mm-hmm. a lot of incredible growth. And how you guys built that was just All this I, index universal life and everything we're doing today is yeah. nothing but a third iteration of index universal, of, of bi term investment difference. That's all it is. It's amazing. So then what happened is they ended up selling. After 14 uh, years, right? We, yeah. we finally tied. But Sandy Wilde had finally come into play there and had. Bought up from Jerry Side, yeah. the, the Solomon Brothers, Which create, created City City well, Bank. Well, right? he, yeah. he 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 bought City Travelers. He so. bought City Bank from John Reed, and then he bought part of Travelers and put it all together and created this big conglomerate called City Group. Yeah, and so we we they but before Sandy got in the picture, Jerry Sy was the owner of the company that bought Ale Williams. So he bought he bought it from Pencorp. The, the Stanley Byer, Stanley Sandy Byer did sold it to him, and so we were tied there. And so when Sandy when Sandy buys this thing from from what, what became Prime America from yeah. Jerry Sy, yeah. we come along as sort of a little dangling participle over here. <laughs> Sandy didn't even know he had bought us. I mean, we were just some little incidental thing, which is yeah. now a, a he bought, multi-billion. He bought dollar. Smith, Barney, Solomon <laughs> Brothers, and all these big name companies. And we just were a little dangling contract. Wow. And now you guys are, well, now Primerica is a multi-billion dollar publicly oh, traded company, Yeah, publicly right? traded company. About, right, it was, in their heyday, about two or three months ago, I saw it was right close to $7 billion in market That's cap, amazing. which is smaller than you, by the way. Well, maybe. Um, so, well, and then, and then you said, listen, I'm going to create something else, right? And then you went out and created WMA. Yeah. Tell us a bit about how right. you started that. The first thing I want people to know is that when art sold, it didn't take them but about a month or two or three that they got a little gotcha on art. Next thing you know, he had eased art out of the picture. Mm. That was Sandy's style. That's he, crazy. Completely yeah. different than yours. That's crazy, man. One of the reasons yeah. why I'm with you today is your style is not like Sandy's. It's not like these other companies. You're buying the leadership and the management for longevity. Well, we're partnering. Right? I know, I know you're, it's you're, all about partnering. You're partnering it with yeah. it. That's it. But you know what I mean. You're, I got you're, you're putting all that together. That's one of the major reasons why I'm here today. Trust me. That's what happened. They pushed the art aside. And I, and I, I said, well, I'll stay another year or so just to see what's going to happen. Because I was the biggest guy in the company. And uh, we'll see. And I gave it my all. And it didn't take me. Once, once they came down from New York and they were trying to convince me to calm myself down, don't be promising these guys that they could do this and do that because uh, Sandy wants to control it. And the big thing is myself and four or five other guys were making twice the money that Sandy was making. <laughs> and he didn't like that. So he immediately wanted us to shrink our dreams down and start. Mm. Once he, once they told me that I needed to shrink my vision, it was over. Mm. First of all, I, it was a job skill I didn't have. I didn't know how to do no. that. I mean, I had sold out no. there. Was, so I never planned to leave. I, I figured we'd be there forever. And it took a long time, but we built it and built World Marketing Alliance and just a great relationships with Aegon and those people. Built it up, and, and in 10 years, we had we had done more business in 10 years than we did in 14 at A.O. Williams with a third of the recruits. We had, wow. we, had five, we had we had five million recruits, and it was amazing it, what we built there, selling variable universal life. Now you had to have a securities license and an insurance license. So we did some phenomenal things out there, and 
It lasts. We built those companies to last. Today, they, these they're companies are amazing companies. One of them's forty something years old. One's thirty something years old. And th- so, amazing you, leaders in the when market. When you buy, when you partner with us, yeah. you're partnering with something that that builds for, for longevity. That's what we do. Well, you know, it's it's amazing if you think about the legacy that Al Williams Prime America has in the industry, which you help create. You think about what WFG now is, World Financial Group with Transamerica and Agon. And the, the, the impact that they have on society as a whole today of what you founded as part of that is remarkable. And then what you started with Hegemon is even bigger, I think. And it, it will is. be bigger than anything else. So tell us about well, what, what Before what I get to that one point, I, one point I want to add to what I said a while ago, as big as Primerica and big as World Financial Group are sitting over there, two, two big companies today, testaments to what we did, the splinter people, the people that came, went through the system, broke off, the, the Freedom Equity Groups and the, the Premier Financial Analysts and the PHPs and the, the alphabet soup yeah. out there of classic imitator groups, yeah. they were all our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And, and, it, and if, you add, if you add up all the premium done, the, the, I, I've done a study on this over the last few years, if you add up all the premium that's been done the last 10 or 15 years, not from Primerica or WFG, but from the splinter groups that have been in the industry producing, it was more than those two companies combined when we, when we sold those companies. You know what's amazing? I was just with Tim Ash, you know, Ash Brokerage. Mm-hmm. Right. Congratulations on that, by the way. Listen, I, I'm so proud to be Tim's partner and Jim, Ash, and the whole team there. It's just amazing people. And we were talking about Ash and their logo and really about the impact we have on society and really about you know, their logo is an ash tree. And I was talking to him about the fact that I think we're all called to be planting trees and leaving a legacy truly is about planting trees that you That's know. That's our philosophy, man. That you know you're not going to be even sitting under the shade, right. right? But you've been like Johnny Appleseed, man. Yeah. You've been like throwing out seeds That's, everywhere. And, 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 and trying to get a whole bunch of seed throwers with me. That's, yeah, just like, come on, let's throw a bunch of seeds. Let's well, that, that's, a good, that's a good way of looking at it. But we, I do believe in growing these trees for the future generations. Amen. And that's, that's what you, you, you got to have some vision. You got to have some faith. Yeah. And you got to love what you do and have a passion. The two things that I tell our people from the day we started A.O. Williams to today in Hegemon, is the two things they got need to have right up front. If you really want us to have a chance to get started down the right track, have a passion for our mission, a submission to our system. If you'll do those two things, everything else will backfill into it. Wow. So you started Hegemon. Tell us about this latest iteration of mm-hmm. what you've that's, been doing. That's a great story. Uh, about it tell us itself. about that. Well, it, 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 as I back up into in the back in the mid '80s and, and A.L. Williams. I love to read books, and I love history, and I love to all these great leaders. And I locked in on Alexander the Great. You know, mm-hmm. I said, if I'm going to copy somebody, let's copy somebody that conquered the known world. That'll do for starts. You know, <laughs> he conquered the known world. Let's try that one. So I really was really loved that. And then one day I got a copy, of, you know, about books. You know, philosopher Emerson said the only difference between you today and you five years from now will be the people you meet and the books you read. Well, I'm a believer in that. So I got a draft of something called The Alexander Complex by Michael Meyer. And I'm reading this book, and he was talking about modern-day people like T. Boone Pickens, Carl Icahn, yeah. Ted Turner. They wanted to conquer the world for noble purposes. Yeah. And Alexander was, un- unlike his father, King Philip, he could conquer, but he couldn't rule. He liked to mm-hmm. conquer lands. Well, Alexander, as a young boy, 18, 19, when he took over, he wanted to conquer hearts. So he conquered the world by conquering the hearts of men, not the lands. And he, he, could, that. he anyway, that, that's, that was his story. So I love the way he, his whole style. And I read all these books about his history. And then one time I read this modern version of if he, and, and, and I forget what page it is, but there was a paragraph. I'm, I'm on my jet now, flying into Los Angeles, got Francis Avery, who, who was a superstar back with me in A.O. Williams. We were going down in to speak that night to a couple of thousand people in Los Angeles. And I'm over there just reading this little draft and everything. And, and all of a sudden it comes to this paragraph. And an epiphany again. This is an epiphany. You, you don't have many, but that was, there's another one. I'm sitting there reading this thing, and it said, if Alexander the Great were alive today, he would probably go after the business world, which would be his last frontier to be able to yeah. go out and conquer. He wouldn't conquer people or lands. He'd conquer businesses. He would be a Brian Adams is what he would be. So, <laughs> so he, he would do those. And then here's the key. Then this was the sentence. It says, his sprawling holding company, comma, Alexander Inc., comma, would transform in this industry, that industry. And, and I'm sitting there. What? I mean, I'd like to jump out of the plane. Francis thought I was having a heart attack. And I'm, I'm having an epiphany. Well, I'm, I'm reading this book. 
And Aim called Norma that night when I got to the hotel room. I said, Norma, I know what's wrong with me now. All these years. She said, what? I got the Alexander Complex. That's what it is. I got it. <laughs> and so from that point forward. Conquering hearts. That Alexander, Alexander Inc. is it's the idea. I want you to know, I've been building the Alexander Inc., the idea. It's not a company. In fact, I even got a picture of a, I can show you this full page ad we put when I left A.L. Williams. In, put the full page ad into the USA Today full four color on the back page of the sports section announcing the, the arrival and birth of Alexander Inc. I'll show it's in my office. I'll show it before you leave here. Anyway, so I was I was all in. Modern day Alexander, I was giving our guys swords. You mentioned something about knives earlier. Yeah, yeah. We gave swords and empowered these guys with these Alex, swords of Alexander. I had Franklin Mint made me a hundred swords a year for three or four years in a row, forged them. Wow. Special swords of Alexander. So I'm looking for modern day Alexanders who want to conquer conquer their future. So our motto is to conquer your future. But one last thing. So here we go. I've been trying to build this thing. So that's when I went out and built I built World Marketing Alliance on that. And I've treated the A.L. Williams World Marketing Alliance, which is World Financial Group, it was Primarica right. World Financial Group. And Hegemon is the third part of that trilogy, like the Lord of the Rings, it's the third ring in the trilogy. And it, it's been one long continuum. And I tell all the people today that join us today in Hegemon because I was in all those businesses and I was that's a part of your DNA. You were in A.O. Williams because I was in A.O. Williams. Yeah. You were in WMA because I was in WMA. So they've got it in their lineage, their bloodline. Yeah. And so this was this was sort of the crowning moment. But I knew I knew I wanted this one to be the capstone, the flagship of all three of the companies. Right. This was to be it. And we looked for the right partner, the right way to find us a way to. Because at some point, we knew, just like in A.O. Williams, just like in W.A., we were going to have to find that partner because uh, uh, the, the, the founders should only go so far that they need to bring they need to bring some more corporatization, institutionalization needs to come to them to take it the rest of the way. And you became the one. You chose us and we chose you. And yeah. here we are. And I think the Alexander Inc., the idea is going to be fulfilled for us and for tying into what you guys are doing is just going to it's going to make us make that dream. So reading that little par- paragraph from that plane all those years ago in the mid 80s, I see how it's absolutely going to finish now. First of all, that's super humbling to hear for have a living legend, an icon in the industry that helps so many people get into this business but also help so many people with their life and health needs across the the country and across the world and in a lot of ways to hear you say that, what you've built at Hegemon is massive. I mean, you have tens of thousands of agents. You've been bringing in so many people. You've got such an incredible success story. And it's really based on building off those building blocks. And now with integrity coming together, us continuing to be able to provide you additional technology Mm -hmm. and resources and support to help you take it all away is something that I'm incredibly proud to be part of. Mm -hmm. And I know all of our partners who are are listening today and, and all of our team who are all employees and shareholders are excited about now being able to bring in another icon to the Integrity family to say, now let's go and continue mm-hmm. to support each other and serve well, you. I'm just, so, I'm just so honored to join all these icons, and I know a lot of them. Yeah. A lot of them have a, are my, are my... Some my, of them are your disciples. Some, some Those little apple seeds. They're, 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 either my, <laughs> they're either my lineage or my discipleship uh, <laughs> friends, and that's good. I'm honored for, to be around them and learn from them and proud of what all they've ever done to be worthy. To, if they were good enough to take practice whatever little bit we might have played in their life to, for them to be successful, and then for you to think enough of them, for y'all to partner with them, that tells me that's a big deal. And I'm just honored to join with them right here as we go right here now. But it's just a, it's a special moment in time for us. We're just so honored to be able to do this. One little side note. One reason I left that I left A.O. Williams and didn't stay was that I told you they told me they wanted me to shrink my vision. Yeah. All the way I was building my businesses, I was a do-it-first leader. I was running the biggest base shop. I was the best recruiter. I run a big deal. And all of my leaders, I said, if you keep doing what I'm doing, follow my system, you're going to get to where I'm at. And then when I get there, I'll be up here. And, you, and I could keep pulling them up to yeah. the, well, they told me I really couldn't do that. And they told me to stop telling my people. It was over for me. I mean, yeah. one reason why I love this partnership is now fully I can reach down and say, look, I'm a managing partner here. I've been able to be able to have this sort of stuff. And each one of you, if you do it right, you'll be able to come up here and maybe become a managing partner, be able to have that stock in this thing. I can pull them to where I was and where I'm going to be. And that's a great thing. Hey, we are just getting started. 
And I really believe that because of people like you and all the great people you have coming behind you. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to have all of them as partners as well. Hubert, thank you for trusting well, us. Thank well, you for we, believing we, us. We are honored to it's take an you. Honor to uh, be thank you for everything. I love you. Got you got great people, great great team of people. I've met a lot of them around at your, at your headquarters, and our employees love the the employee team. Oh, We've got a proud elite that. team. That's our that's employees, amazing. not our not the thousands in the field, but the employees. They they are just so happy for their futures too. So well, it's it's just fun. a win win for everybody. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun, and as you guys see, listen, this is a huge moment for integrity, bringing on an icon like Hubert Humphrey and the entire Hedgemon group. This is going to be an exciting opportunity for us at Integrity to continue to grow, continue to look at ways that we can serve even more people together. And now you know why I'm so excited and humbled to add my best buddy here, Hubert Humphrey, now to the Integrity family. We're so excited, man. We're just I getting got, started. I got my pen, man. We're ready to go, man. Thank you, guys. Hope everybody has a great day. God bless you guys. Look forward to meeting everybody. Excited to, uh, to announce this partnership.